This is lesson two from the graphs and network topic. And in this lesson, we'll be looking at isomorphic connected graphs and adjacency matrices. So there's a lot to unpack on this one, and I'm going to split it up into two parts. The learning goal for this video is to look into the definitions of isomorphic graphs, what a connected graph is, and what an adjacency matrix is. We're going to look into what a bridge is in a graph, and also look into what a completed graph is and its corresponding formulas. The success criteria is to be able to see if a pair of graphs are isomorphic, to determine if a graph is connected, to make an adjacency graph from a matrix and vice versa, and to find how many edges a graph has based on how many vertices there are. Lesson 2, we look and delve into all these different types of characteristics within a graph because we can learn so much and use them in so many ways um, and so lesson two quite a bit to digest um, but you should be able to get the hang of it because they're relatively simple characteristics the first characteristic we're going to look into is what's called an isomorphic graph so different looking graphs can contain the same information and when this happens we say that these graphs are equivalent um, by the word of isomorphic and the word here morph is a key word to morph is to change from one way to another or still be the same and this is where that iso comes from and it just says here essentially it's the same graph but drawn differently so for example we see these three different graphs here and despite being drawn differently and looking differently in graph terms they're technically the same they are equivalent and this is a reason. First of all, we can see that each of these graph, graphs, plural, have four vertices. So A, B, C, D, namely. And what you have to see is if we focus on, say, ver vertex A, A goes to D and C, and we can see a line coming out. This is also the same here. A goes to C and also D, despite the fact that it's drawn in a different orientation, it's got a curved line, it's a bit different, it doesn't have an intersect, there's still lines coming out of A going to C and D. And this is also the same for here, C and D. And you'll notice that if we were to do a dual with one more vertex, um, say vertex D in this case, D goes to A, to B, and to C. Vertex D here goes to A, to C, and to B. Same here, to A, to B, and to C. And this happens before all of the vertices. In fact, um, each one of them will be the same. Despite this, there being an intersection, I can technically draw that first one, and I can draw a line that goes like this, some A, to D and then C and B here, I can go from D to C like this, I can draw a line from C to B, I can draw a line from D to B, and then this A to C, how they've drawn it and they've cut it across, I can technically draw a curved line that goes across like this, and despite it looking different, they are technically the same because there is a line representing uh, A and C to have a connection. So this is to be isomorphic, and this is isomorphic to not only graph 1, but graph 2 and graph 3 as well. Um, and so isomorphic graphs are very, very tricky because you have to delve into every single vertice and see if it connects with um, all the other vertices alike. And if they do, and they're the same amount of vertices, they are isomorphic. So these graphs on to the right here and the bottom here, these graphs, they're not isomorphic. I can see that with here, C goes to D, A, and B, but C only goes to A and D. There's no other line that goes from C to B. So this graph two isn't equivalent to graph one, so it's not isomorphic. And you'll notice that this is also the same for graph three. So we're gonna look at these two graphs, and uh, two pairs of graphs, and we're going to see if they're isomorphic or equivalent. And these are the two corresponding uh, key terms. 
they have the same number of edges and vertices and the corresponding vertices have the same degree and the edges connect the same vertices. So we're going to see if the following pairs are isomorphic. So this pair is isomorphic to this pair. So even though it's rotated, I can automatically see that there's a line connecting this looped vertex, even though it's not named, to this corner one here. Here, it's not connected. So no, it's not isomorphic. Uh, simple as that. Uh, are these ones isomorphic? Well, it might seem like no at first. Um, we have to double check. We can see here that this connection from this vertex to here will be the corresponding same vertex from here to here. Now what I've done is I've labeled the vertices just to indicate what's going on and then you can actually see here that A connects to D and to B, A connects to D and to B, B to C and to D in the different ways. So B goes to D twice, B goes to C and B also goes to A. So despite it being orientated in a completely different way and with a little intersection here, this actually is isomorphic. These two graphs are equivalent. So it's not obvious. Um, when you get a question like this, make sure you can try to label, uh, use uh, some type of characteristic or main characteristic to see what uh, you can label it. So here, this loop I've labeled A and I've just spawned off accordingly and notice, hey, they are isomorphic. Next, we're going to look into connected graphs. And so far, all the graphs we have encountered have been what's called connected. In a connected graph, every vertex is connected to every other vertex, either directly or via another vertex. So there's always some type of connection between every single vertex, whether it's straight or whether it's via another vertex. Um, and all three of these uh, vertices here, um, they're all connected. Um, I can get, let's specifically look at graph uh, three here. I can't get from B to D directly, but I can go via C to D, or I can go via C to A to D. There's some way to get from one vertex to another. Uh, so a graph is connected if every vertex in the graph is accessible from every other vertex in that graph along a path formed by its edges within that graph. However, the three graphs here are not connected because there is no path along the edges that connect vertex A, for this example here, to every other vertex in the graph. So this, I will draw a line to indicate that that's separate. This vertex here, B, is by itself. This is disconnected because we can't get from any of these vertices here to B. It's isolated. Same with this one here. We can see that D, it's by itself. So D, can't we can't go to any of the other ver vertices. And here we can see that there are two groups. We've got A, D, and C, B. C can go to B, but C can't go to D or A. There's this separation of some sort. And it's really simple. If they're separated by, by vertex or group of vertices, it is disconnected. So we're going to state if the following graphs are connected or disconnected. Very plain and simple. Everyone here, we can get from one way to another. So this here is connected. However, the next one is disconnected because of the, there's a disconnect between this and this one. So this one is disconnected up with DIS. This one here, connected. This one here, we've got this lone vertice by itself. So it's disconnected. Pretty simple, connected and disconnected, I believe. Um, what gets a, a little bit tricky is determining if a graph has a bridge. So connected graphs have applications and range problems such as planning airline routes, uh, communication systems and computer networks where a single missing connection can lead to uh, an operable system. Um, such critical connections are called bridges. So a bridge is a single edge in a connected graph that, if removed, leaves the graph disconnected. A graph can have more than one bridge. So here we have graph 1. Um, the edge is CD. Um, here and this edge here is a bridge because if we remove this if we take this away We're left with this disconnected graph So this is isolation between this part here of the graph and this part here of the graph So we can remove any one of these edges and we can still get from one to another But the only one that if we remove 
and it will leave a disconnect is CD and so CD is considered a bridge and the last thing to wrap this one up for um, part A or part one of this video is completed graphs so a complete graph has every vertex that is drawn within a graph to be connected to every other vertex that is you can get to every vertex directly they have no loops or multiple slash parallel edges so one when we have um, vertex one and there are four other vertices around it we're expecting four four lines to spread out one going directly to each vertice and this will happen for every single one of these vertices each vertice will have four edges coming out assuming that there are five vertices now complete graphs they don't have any loops so they don't connect to themselves they just go to uh, every other um, vertice so to see how many uh, edges a complete graph has um, we can determine that dependent on how many vertices we put in based on this formula here very simple a complete graph with seven vertices so if I were to draw one two three four five six seven and each vertice um, say for instance were to connect to every other vertice by one line we want to know how many edges will be drawn all up we know this one's going to have six this one's going to have six this one's going to have six etc this is the formula that we use so the amount of edges is equal to v times v minus one all over two and the amount of vertices is just seven so all we're doing is just a straight substitution of seven so this is seven times bracket seven minus one we've got to work out what's in the bracket first so seven minus one is six so seven times six over two seven times six seven times six is 36 42 over two and 42 divided by two is 21 in other words if I were to draw six lines for each one of these vertices I'm expecting 21 edges all up. I'll wrap this one up for part one and stay tuned for part two.